Right, let's move on to our top story. Derek Draper, the former political advisor and husband to TV presenter Kate Garraway, has died at the age of 56. Kate revealed the news in a moving post on Instagram this morning in which she said, Derek was surrounded by his family in his final days and I was by his side holding his hand throughout the last long hours and when he passed. I have so much more to say and of course I will do so in due course, but for now, I just want to thank all the medical teams who fought so hard to save him and to make his final moments as comfortable and dignified as possible. Well, Derek Draper suffered from a four-year-long battle with COVID and was recently hospitalised after having a heart attack. Back in 2021, Kate Garraway won a National Television Award for her documentary called Finding Derek about her family's experience in managing her husband's condition. And this is one of the last photos released of the couple. It was when Kate picked up her MBE last summer. There it is. Well, joining me in the studio now is the showbiz editor of The Sun on Sunday, Hannah Hope. Hannah, such sad news. And I think the extraordinary thing about Kate Garraway and Derek Draper in the last few years is Kate Garraway has been a household name for a very, very long time, something of a national treasure. But during the course of Derek's illness, uh, his confinement at home, she then invited us all into her household and we got to see what life was really like for her as his, his carer for him um, after contracting COVID so dramatically. It's been incredible to watch that. Absolutely. Uh, I've met Kate many times. She used to actually bring Derek along to many red carpet events. They're a very bubbly, happy couple. Uh, and obviously the heartbreaking news really hit them as a family. But as you say, she used this experience to help educate, to help raise awareness. And that's how she actually got nominated for her MBE. She's made two documentaries, Finding Derek and Caring for Derek. So as you say, it really did feel that the public got to know them as a family and have really followed his long battle. Uh, it was looking hopeful for Derek last year. Back in April, he accompanied Kate to see Sir Elton John in concert. And then as you showed pictures of him with her when she picked up her award from the Royals. But after her, his heart attack in December, uh, his health obviously took a turn for the worse. Uh, and she and her family have been holding a vigil by his bedside. Uh, her heartbreaking words in her Instagram post uh, detail how she was holding his hands in his final moments yeah and I really feel that the company uh, the country will be grieving with her well I think this is absolutely right because during the course of watching those documentaries which you know we both know documentaries don't tend to get very big viewing numbers particularly something with a, a subject matter like that which was about somebody really struggling with their health and the family and the impact on the, te the, the children who I think are now teenagers um, but millions of people watched those documentaries and really, really cared about Kate Garraway's story um, and found out a lot more about Derek Draper, who wasn't a household name uh, as, as she was. But of course now, so many people, when they are grieving, they want their privacy. And, and I guess that's going to be difficult for her, isn't it? Because we've seen this, this statement saying you know, that she wants to talk more in the future. But I guess she has been carrying this family single-handedly for four years now, hasn't she? Absolutely, they've got two children and as well as making these documentaries, she has been appearing on Good Morning Britain. They've said that she's got indefinite leave to give her all the time she needs to grieve. She's also uh, was meant to be hosting Life Stories tomorrow on ITV, but they're gonna be holding a repeat uh, to give her the time that she needs uh, with her family. Um, I, I think she probably will talk uh, eventually, either in a video interview or uh, even with the son, she has a great relationship with us uh, but obviously she's probably dealing with lots of emotions but as well I think what really um, touched the country with her story is that many families during uh, COVID-19 also had situations where they lost relatives and also many people did suffer long COVID and it was still uh, a, med a medical situation that we were gaining awareness of and Kate and her family gave us first-hand awareness into the inner workings of it. Yeah absolutely and I think one of the other things that really came across in that documentary um, was that you know, this is a normal family. People tend to think that, you know, people who are very famous like Kate Garraway um, is 
are very, very rich and everything comes uh, easy. But of course, one of the great levelers is illness. And I remember one of the things that was quite shocking about that was she was talking about converting her house and building Derek um, a special bedroom with a, you know, medical facilities and a hospital bed down on the ground floor. And that cost money. And I remember her saying that she was worried sick about her own finances because they'd lost, lost Derek's income, of course, because he had retrained as, a, as some sort of therapist. Um, they'd lost his income and she didn't know how she was going to pay for all this building work. And that, I think, really stunned a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. And it was very, she was very vulnerable to be so open about her finances. I know firsthand celebrities aren't particularly open about those sorts of personal details. And as you say, she lay her life on the line but lots of other families going through long COVID and various other medical difficulties will have also had those uh, sufferable situations. And I do think it was very brave of her to be open about that. Uh, and I think that she will talk more about how uh, he, he had his sort of last moments with the family and, and maybe anything he said to her uh, in those last few weeks. Um, so I'm sure that we'll hear more. And lots of tributes coming in, both from the world of showbiz and the world of politics. Absolutely. Her ITV colleagues, along with Piers Morgans from Talk TV, have uh, paid their tributes. But of course, before he was a uh, psychotherapist, um, he worked as a spin doctor for the Labour government. So uh, Tony Blair and Gordon Brown have both paid uh, very long tributes to Derek. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Um, talking of uh, politics, let's bring in the former Labour MP and Cabinet Minister, Sean Woodward, who knew Derek Draper well. Um, Sean, we were just talking about uh, Derek Draper's uh, political life before he retrained. And one of the things um, since he's been unwell that I, I found very moving was um, Peter Mandelson telling uh, the public that actually... Gordon Brown and Tony Blair had sent um, uh, voice notes, voice messages when uh, Derek was in hospital, sending him messages saying, you know, Derek, we're all behind you, sending him music to try to, to get through to him when he was uh, in a coma. And I remember Peter Mandel saying that in his illness, Derek Draper had brought people together, had unified so many people who had been integral uh, to the formation of New Labour. Peter's absolutely right to describe it in that way. I mean, I think all of us this morning are deeply shocked and saddened to hear this news. I mean, we've all known that Derek has been unwell for a long time, but when you have this outcome and when you have that incredibly moving statement from Kate this morning, you, you really are arrested and you, you find yourself thinking about someone you knew. I mean, I knew him very early on. I was elected in 97. I crossed the floor of the House of Commons in 99. Uh, it was around that time that I got to know Derek, and he was always known affectionately amongst his friends as Dolly at the time. And he was just the most incredibly loving, vibrant, brilliant, committed person. He'd entered politics, his family uh, steeped in this. He'd come through Nick Brown's office in Newcastle. He'd ended up working for Peter Mandelson, and he'd very much been at the heart of creating the new Labour project. And of course, I saw that on the other side at the time as a Conservative. And it was one of those examples where, you know, yes, you have a rivalry because you at that time are on different sides. But whenever I met him, we always engaged as friends and he always had a smile, but he was brilliant and his brilliance really struck you. And what's so savage about what's happened is you know, if you were writing the book, as it were, if this was fiction, this is not how it should have ended. He was brilliant. He was wonderful. He had a, an amazing capacity for reinvention. I mean, when he decided to leave politics and retrain, as Hannah was talking about, as a psychotherapist, um, again, it's all about helping people. And I suppose what hurt so much this morning, and we think mostly, of course, of Kate and her family, is how in the end he couldn't be saved. You know, the ravages of COVID that visited him so early on in this illness was something that however brave he and Kate and the family were, and my goodness, what a story of bravery by all of them. Uh, but in the end, COVID and the effects of COVID got him. And I, I think we're all deeply sad today. Um 
Um, but we're just looking at pictures there when um, Kate Garraway got her, got her gong um, from the palace. And, of course, uh, Derek did manage to go to that. And I, and I understand, I think Derek did also go to Peter Mandelson's recent wedding. Um, and again, Peter Mandelson wrote um, in, in a magazine about how he never thought he'd get married. And this ended up being, being such a special day. And I think um, probably made all the more special by... Um, Derek Draper being able to get there. What would Derek Draper think of, of politics today, do you think, Sean? Well, I mean, two, two thoughts immediately occur to me because, of course, in many ways, Derek was quite a... Hannah described him as a fly on the wall in some sense. A, a, in politics, yes, he was always present. He was absolutely at Peter Mandelson's side throughout, and Tony Blair has referred to the importance of of, of Derek's place, as, as indeed Gordon has done. But of course, it was in Derek's illness and the way that he and Kate fought these last few years that he became a household name. And the household name, and, and this is really interesting to me because before politics, I worked with Esther Ranson and was the editor of That's Life. What's really interesting to me is actually Derek's gift and Kate's extraordinary gift to people in the UK is to have highlighted caring and how you care for people. And of course, Derek would have been enormously proud if he'd been able to look to the future uh, as a younger man to say that the thing that will be his legacy, and I think it will be his legacy, the politics is incredibly important. He was absolutely at the heart of the new Labour project. But the hope, the highlighting of the difficulty of caring, but also I think Kate talked about the privilege as well of caring. And I think that we will look at Derek's legacy and the work that Kate has highlighted, and I'm sure now will continue to highlight about being a carer and how we care for people, not just people with COVID, but in any place where we have to care for them. That is extraordinary legacy and that's going to live on that's going to be talked about yeah. Derek's gift as we lose him from this earth is to have really put front and center stage the issue of caring for people and you know that's at the heart of what new labor was also about caring for people but and, what an incredible legacy, however tragic this is. And, and Sean, it's interesting, um, you reminded us there that you'd worked with Esther Ranson, um, and I remember those days when you were working uh, um, on that life. Now, of course, Esther Ranson has recently herself been in uh, the news talking about having a dignified death. And, of course, Kate Garraway in her statement this morning on Instagram also talked about um, how grateful she was that... Um, the, the, the medical staff that she worked with had done everything they could um, to give Derek uh, dignity uh, at the end. And I just wonder whether that, that um, policy, the, which, which politicians are called on to discuss, um, of giving people the best death they can have, not just the best life, um, whether, again, uh, Derek's death will have brought that into focus for a lot of people. Well, Daisy, I think this is really a very important conversation that you've brought here because Kate's statement, as you rightly say, uses the word dignity in the final sentence, that she was thanking the medical staff for the dignity that they helped Derek have in his last days and hours as she held his hand. And what Esther is doing in her brilliant, inimitable way is highlighting that too. And, of course, she's talking about herself and that should the treatment that she's currently having for stage four lung cancer turn out to be not giving her an extended period in the time ahead, she's making us all think about the importance of dignity in the way that we leave this life. And I'm so struck by Kate's words today. I'm so struck by, you know, if there is anything positive to be said about such a tragic day, the serendipity of those thoughts being brought together. Esther's words don't give us dignity in how we may leave this earth when you have an illness. And the dignity that the medics ensured that Derek could have with his wife and family. 
And, you know, it's enough to make me almost, even though I stopped being an MP in 2015, it's enough to make me want to bang on Keir Starmer's door right now and say, I want to come back to take this one campaign more than anything else through. Because I think that actually politicians, and I'd learned this when I was on That's Life, and then when I became a cabinet minister in Northern Ireland, crucially, it's based on listening to people. And the people in Britain, the case of Kate and Derek today, are telling us dignity matters. We needn't leave this earth in an undignified way. And of course, there need to be checks and balances in this, and I'd be the first to recognize that. But Esther's argument is assisted death when you are in this place is really important. And of course, as everybody has said for so long now, we don't do this to animals, but for some strange reason, we think that humans may have to have sometimes the most undignified death. And listening to... Uh, people like Diana Rick talking about how they faced death, listening to the voices of people who've had to face really undignified moments when they lose control of their bowels, when they're in constant pain. This is not the way to leave. And my dear, darling friend, Esther, to see her now say, please listen. I mean, it makes me, as I say, want to go back into yeah. politics to make this happen. It makes me want to go back to being the editor of That's Life to campaign for it. And I just hope all of you guys in the media will go on doing this really important work. Is we will certainly go on now. discussing it, Sean Woodward. Bring I, this to the House of Commons. I, thank I, I, I promise we'll keep banging that drum. And thank you so much um, for giving us your memories of your friend Derek Draper today.